Energy 808, the cutting edge. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. I'm going to talk about Hawaiian Electric today, how Hawaiian Electric is looking for land in all the right places. <laughs> you could put that to music. It's a great move to expand renewables. That's what it's about, especially at a time when people are becoming more aware, more, more conscious, not only here, but on the mainland, about um, you know developing renewables all over the place. It seems to be all the rage. It's, uh, it's a high point of public attention. So our guest today is Ken Horita. Uh, he is with the Hawaiian Electric's Renewable Acquisition Department, which some people think that's the most important department in Hawaiian Electric. I, 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 would, I would join with them on that. Maybe Ken would join on that too. Um, and we're going to talk about RFI, which stands for Request for Information. Okay, We'll be right back to do just that. Ken Horita, say hello to the people. Hi, people. <laughs> okay, what's it like to be um, Hawaiian Electric's Renewable Acquisition Department? There are some people who are going to be really jealous when you tell them. What's it like? Uh, it's never slow. <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> and it's never a lack of um, a lot of things that we need to do and seek and um, pursue. Yeah, what do I have to do to get your job? Do I have to study engineering? What is it? What should I focus on? Uh, we actually have a lot of different fields in our area. So engineering, there is a number of folks with attorney backgrounds. Um, and, and it varies. It varies. Attorneys? I don't know. Maybe there's hope for me. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about NIMBY. Okay. You know, I remember going as some of the wind turbines on the North Shore, you know, and I remember situations where the community would be, you know, Hawaiian Electric would contact the community and would say, is this OK? And the leaders of the community would say, yeah, sure, we like you. We like wind. And all that. You know, and then, then they would, you know, uh, have a ceremony and they would, uh, you know, create a, a project and, and start, um, you know, building the, the wind turbine and all that. And then all of a sudden the community would say, we changed our mind. Because communities change. And there's always some guy, you know, who has a NIMBY problem. And it's a big, it's a big, in an island state, NIMBY is a serious matter because there's not enough land to do everything you want. So you guys have this uh, RFI uh, series. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really interesting to know about that. So tell us what an RFI is, um, a, a hint, it has something to do with information. Uh, and um, tell us why you're doing it, how long you've been doing it and what it means to the effort to acquire renewables. So this land RFI um, is just seeking to understand um, what land may be available out there. Um, to your, um, you know, to your NIMBY uh, concern and issue, you know, uh, by us understanding who is interested in offering their land, um, it may help in the process in terms of acceptance um, in the area and within the community. Um, we actually had a Hawaii Powered Initiative that the company had been doing, and that was a initiative to work with communities across our territories and to identify potential locations um, for future grid scale renewable projects. Um, this is kind of like the next step within there where we're um, now reaching out to um, landowners to find who may be interested in um, making their land available to site renewable energy projects or, you know, even company equipment that will help in to support oh, sure. um, yeah. renewable energy projects. You know, when you're testing people, you're testing the community and, you know, taking that temperature, if you will. You're asking them, do you, you know, do you support renewables? Do you support the, you know, utilities effort at building renewables and, and making its uh, its goals, uh, you know, the next few years? Uh, would you be part of our effort or or you want to be habut? <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you want to do? <clears throat> so um, so it's, it's, this is not the first time then. This is not the first time you're going out with the land. Uh, tell us about the history of it. Yeah, so... Um... In advance of our first um, set of um, requests for proposals that was going out to seek uh, development of new renewable energy projects, um, 
we issued a similar land RFI in about the 2016-ish timeframe, 2017. Um, and that one, we were uh, purely focused on trying to see if there were landowners that were interested in allowing their parcels to site new renewable energy projects. And what we were, um, the goal of that was to um, gather that information and then to offer it to potential um, developers. Uh, energy developers. Yeah. Um, and and just to say that like, hey, you know, we did this RFI. These are the people that came forth and said that they would be interested, um, you know, in potentially citing something. And then, you know, if you're interested in that, then uh, why don't you go out there and, um, you know, make contact with them, talk to them. And then, you know, like the arrangements of the land, et cetera, would be between the um, project developer and the landowner. So almost more like a um, like a matchmaking type service. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, a matchmaker. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's just a great thing to do because it gets, it gets the ball rolling and it puts the imprimatur of the electric company, utility company, on the deal so that everybody knows uh, that, that Hawaiian Electric is okay with this procedure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so the other thing is um, when you went out there in whatever, 20, 2018, whatever it was, uh, were you looking for land for any particular kind of a renewable? Was it solar? Was it wind? Was it, what was yeah. it, anything? We, we just left it um, very broad um, mm -hmm. because our RFPs um, at that time too were, you know, they were technology agnostic. Um, so it was just if they were interested in, you know, just uh, any kind of renewable energy project. And then again, you know, there was no uh, no binding agreement, no um, nothing that they had to commit to. It's just uh, letting us gather their contact information so that a developer could then contact them. And then they then, you know, discuss with each other what type of project it is. And, you know, if that landowner is still agreeable and open to it. It strikes me that although you're uh, agnostic about the kind of renewable as you are in developing portfolio in general, um, some renewable, you know, this is like George Orwell, some renewables are different from other renewables. There are renewables and renewables. I mean, for example, um, I'm guessing here, but some renewables need more land and other renewables don't need as much land. Mm -hmm. uh, is that true? And what kind of renewables, you know, what, what's the uh, what's the comparison? Yeah, that is true, although I, I'm not um, the most versed in uh, like, uh, you know, which technologies take up more land space and which ones don't. And, 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 uh, yeah, okay. I, I mean, <clears throat> it would be, though, like, you know, like a solar farm would naturally take up more acreage um, than, say, like if it was a um, standalone storage um, type of facility. Mm, yeah, true. And, um, um, of course, a, 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 you know, a, a turbine, a wind turbine is going to take up well, it's not necessarily a lot of acreage, but it's certainly going to be very high. Mm -hmm. the, the bigger they make them, the higher, of course. You know, this, re this reminds me of a thought, though. I just want to throw you a thought, actually. You know, in, in Singapore and other places in the United States, they're doing vertical farming. Okay? So <clears throat> what they do is they, they hang inside a building. They, they hang growing plants, uh, vegetables, fruits, what have you, any kind. Um, and the sun comes through the windows of the building and the, the plants grow in the building and mm -hmm. you can control like a greenhouse situation. You can control how much nutrition, how much water and all this. And the truth is it doesn't take much land at all because it's, it's a building. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's vertical. Very cool. Yeah. And, and th this is working well. And there are people who are investing in this in Singapore as a, and we've had them on the show. Um, it's like a you know a test situation, but maybe someday vertical farming will be everywhere, uh, yeah. even in Hawaii. So I guess I guess what I'm thinking of is that you could build solar vertically too, mm. right? You you don't have to have a great big field of solar. Mm. You could have a building of a structure. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, this goes to the question of um, living in an island state that doesn't that doesn't have all that much land, you know. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so who do you think is going to respond to this RFI? I mean, when we do a, a program, and it's including way back when in radio, you know, um, Michael Titterton, who was the manager of uh, HBR at the time, you know, he had this ability, this fantastic talent to ideate who was listening, uh, who would be your audience. And, and I always carried that with me. So the question here is, um, you know, who do you think is going to respond? Well, I mean, as you know, like uh, being on, you know, small islands, that land is, uh, you know, is a very limited resource and, you know, space, especially large open parcels um, is in short supply uh, in a couple, um, most of the islands, I'd say. Um, and, and so, you know, I guess landowners that, that have control or ownership over like large parcels would be, you know, ones we're hoping to attract. Um, in this land RFI, in fact, I think that we have a um, minimum size of like one acre. Oh. Um, you know, so oh, we're not okay. seeking really small, you know, like backyard type parcels in this, but uh, more larger open spaces. Yeah, how that, well, that works. Um... Yeah, and and so um, I guess it, it, at the end of the day, it's a question of what, what kind of deal um, uh, you or the developer can cut with this individual, because ultimately, if he has a large parcel, he's thinking of making that productive in every way he can, and, and at some point, it's going to be more productive. Say, as a uh, I hate to use the word ando. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So the answers that they're going to come back with to you, uh, they're going to say, yes, no, maybe, here's the land, this is, you know, what it's like, whatever they have to tell you in terms of the information. Mm -hmm. Are those answers confidential? You're going to hold them confidential? Yes. Uh, we, you know, when we go out for the RFI, then we're telling the uh, landowners that, um, you know, that volunteer to participate, that, we won't be sharing that information um, publicly. Although one of the questions that in the RFI that we do ask is whether they're willing to make um, just their uh, property information um, public. Um, and what we are uh, requiring of a uh, interested developer is uh, a non-disclosure agreement with the company. Um, as part of the RFP process, and then it's only through those folks that we are sharing information. Right. That's, that's only fair. So you have to bring them into the confidentiality. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me uh, let me just ask for the basic parameters of this. So you made a press release a week ago or whatever, um, and you went public with that. It was in it was in the Star Advertiser. I saw it there. Um, and now you're trying to get people to submit RFIs. I guess it's on the web. It's on HawaiianElectric.com. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you'll consider, you know, um, whether they are of interest to a developer. Um, and it's, it's you're still running this 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 program where you 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 do matchmaking, you match them up with a developer. In other words, uh, Hawaiian Electric is not necessarily the developer here. It's a, a third party, either from Hawaii or the mainland or anywhere, uh, who who would like to develop renewables and who needs the land and. And Lord knows, sometimes it's really hard for a developer to, to cut a deal for the land. Let's talk about that. Okay, and so what's the time frame of this? How long do people have to respond to the RFI? Uh, and what, what's the nature of the answer they're required to give you? And then what, what do you, what's the time frame on how you use that information and make the match? We're, we're actually... Um... We're actually trying to make it very easy for uh, landowners. So it's uh, it's really in going to our website, reading like the um, reading the scope and the terms and conditions of the um, RFI, and then if they're interested, then sending an email um, to our um, land RFI at hawaiianelectric.com email address, and within that email, then identifying. Um, contact information, but also identifying property information, um, as well as a few uh, like attestation 
uh, type statements uh, just to ensure that they are understanding what the program is about. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're giving them until the 15th of April, so about a month or so from now. And then we're then going to collect the information. Um, and the information in this RFI is slightly different from the one that we did in 2017 and 2020, where um, those were exclusively intended to um, put together the information and make it available to um, developers. In, in this one, we're also using it uh, within the company to take a look um, and, and you know pair it with that um Hawaii Powered Initiative. Um, so that it's kind of like another set of inputs, one from the community, this one is now from landowners to understand like where would renewable energy zones um make sense, um, as well as uh what are the potential opportunities of available land, you know, for siting equipment. So it's not only like with the developers, but even with the company, you know, it's it's to look at and see where land might be available for us to put in our equipment. Yeah, sure. Clearly. I mean, it, absolutely. And uh, that's that's a great uh, a change. Uh, I think an important change. The whole, to me, the whole program is very clever, very creative. And I wonder, you know, you've, you've had a couple of iterations of it. Has it been successful in the sense that have you, have you gotten inquiries that resulted in deals with developers? Uh, yeah, I I cannot say, um, but it, we we've had um, we've had responses, and um, we've had responses from um, small landowners, and we've had responses from um, landowners that uh, hold you know significant holdings. They'd be motivated, and aside from wanting to make the world a better place and deal with climate change and all that, uh, and make Hawaii renewable. Uh, they they are likely to make some money, right? It, doesn't this present a um, mm-hmm. you know a, an economic benefit to the landowner? Tell tell us how that works. Uh, again, all of all of that is uh, we leave it up in the in between to the developer. And, and the, the expectation would be that developer would use the land, and in this one now, you know, you would use the land for sometimes for um, you know equipment and the like, and and there'd be some kind of compensation to the owner right mm-hmm. yeah and for like with a land developer i mean with a um uh project developer uh it would be up to them whether it's going to be like a leasing type arrangement how long that leasing arrangement is going to be um or, or even if it's like a potential sale kind of thing um if they want to commit in, in the fashion okay and that, and that negotiation i mean in the case of the developer is it's just between them uh, mm-hmm. But ultimately, the developer has to come to you um, and uh, present the project. And yeah, and, and that's within like uh, so in the RFPs that we put out for renewable energy projects. Then in those RFPs, um, part of what their proposal must include is to identify site control um, of wherever their project is going to be located. As I said, I think it's a it's a great idea, and we do have this pervasive problem about NIMBY. Um, and I I don't know I don't know really enough about NIMBY because I, I was saying before sometimes people, you know, are are not troubled with uh, renewables in their in their general area, and sometimes they are, and sometimes they they start out not troubled and they get troubled for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the project isn't built yet, they still develop a new mindset about it. Um, what is that? What what is it? Not in my backyard. What is it that they would oppose a project in their general environment? Um, and, and and what therapy is available to them uh, to, 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 to 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 improve their approach to community living and our society and our state? That would be really helpful for us if you can find that out for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a couple of psychologists in our lineup. Maybe I should yeah. talk to them. <laughs> yeah, renewable energy psychologists. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so what about uh, what about the needs? The needs are greatest in some places rather than other places. Can you can you speak to um, you know whether it's, it's greatest? I would imagine it, it's greatest in Oahu because it's crowded in Oahu. 
Um, mm -hmm. But I, I wonder if you, when you look at the state in general, or your operating area in the state, there are certain, you know, certain islands that you're more interested in getting this land uh, as opposed to other islands. Yeah. I, um, I, and I think that the needs somewhat follow like the value of land too, where, you know, Oahu's land prices is, you know, different than Maui's land prices, which is different than the uh, big islands. Um, so part of it is that it's the scarcity of available, especially open land um, on those islands. Uh, you know, there's there's definitely need on all islands, um, but on Oahu and Maui in particular, um, you know, they're um, a little bit uh, lesser along in the renewable energy general, um, uh, penetration than on the big island where we have the most. So that means yeah. So it depends on the the, um, the the plan for that island. How much renewables they have. And for example, uh, uh, you know, Big Island has lots of space, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I suppose there are a lot of landowners that would like to make that open space productive. Um, at, at the same time, though, you know, the Big Island has something like fifty percent of its uh, energy is renewable already. Mm -hmm. uh, so you 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 know it's not clear whether um, you need to put that that you need to put as much emphasis on the Big Island as Oahu, for example. But it it will take many projects you know, across all the islands for us to reach hundred percent renewable. So mm -hmm. yeah, well, to me, this is all part of making making the target goal of getting there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's always conversation about are we moving fast enough? Are we doing all we can do. And those questions are, you know, pointed at the legislature, they're, they're pointed at the energy office, they're pointed at the PUC, and they are pointed at the utility too. And, um, you know, it seems to me that uh, this is more of a public, uh, a public policy issue in the public conversation now than it, than it was a few years ago. So this mm -hmm. project is very, very important. So if somebody comes to you with uh, information about a parcel, that would qualify in size, and that would be you know, interesting to a hypothetical developer, because you don't know the developers who might be interested until you get the RFI, right? <laughs> so it's not like you got a developer standing right there alongside saying, go for it, Ken, see what you can do for me, Ken. Um, no, first you get the information, and then you put it out to the developers, am I right? Right, that's correct. In fact, this... Um... This RFI is being used and collected for you know for the company's future planning. Um, yeah. It's also then for uh, future RFPs, not necessarily the RFPs that we have right now open um, uh, in 2023. Oh, that's that's really an important point. I mean, as far as my interest, my curiosity is concerned. So you may get uh, an RFI back and, and identifying certain land. But it may not be attractive to whatever is happening right now, Whether the developers out there or the utilities uh, interested in putting, you know, uh, grid structures uh, on the land. But you keep it, you keep it on file. Mm -hmm. And even if it is not interesting for that this year or next year, maybe the year after right. it becomes more right. interesting. Mm -hmm. So you're developing a, a kind of inventory of mm -hmm. possibilities. And then the year after, you know, you say, are you still interested in, um, in, you know, putting renewables on your land? You go back to them and check them out. At least, you know, at one point in time this year, 2023, they were interested. So yep. they're, they're out there as possibilities. So, in, in fact, in the RFPs that we have um, open right now, um, though, it, within the RFP itself, we identify um, if interested developers uh, want to see the land RFI results um, that we did in 2020. You know, uh, we give them the instructions to contact us, and then you know, after the NDAs, etc., then we offer them the opportunity. So it was actually the 2020 information that is, you know, is potentially now being used um, if developers don't already have sites that they've, you know, that they. Um, we're interested in identifying. So it's a, it's it's ongoing that way. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So 
um, you're going to continue to do this. Uh, do you, can you speak of the plan? Is this going to be every like two years? You're going to continue to do this and keep your finger on the pulse of what landowners want to do? You know, I'm sure our planners um, have that plan. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't. So. <laughs> well, we just have to call you up in a year or two and see what's going on. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, to me, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing because, you know, some of those people that give you RFIs today and say, my land is available, well, tomorrow, uh, maybe uh, some condominium, I hate to use the word, some condominium developer comes around and says, hey, I'd like to be a, build a condo on your land. And all of a sudden, whether you realize it or not, um, that land is off, off the <laughs> table. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a moving target. Yeah. <laughs> so when you get the RFIs on this, and I think you will, you should, I mean, for many reasons, um, who do you send them to? Uh, you know, who's on the, can I use the term mailing list? Uh, who are you going to share that information with? Uh, well, I, again, the information that we collect will be used um, within the company. Um, but in terms of sharing it externally, then um, the way that the land RFI um, has uh, identified it, you know, we are only going to share it with developers, um, potential developers that are interested in our future RFPs um, that then sign the NDAs for those uh, future RFPs. Okay, well, and, that means you have a list of developers. Uh, no, it, it's for uh, when the future developers are developing their um, proposals, then they'll contact us at that time for that RFP and and ask us, you know, the, you know, that they might be interested in a certain item. And, um, and then you can sort of open your file for them, tell them what's what's out there, what's uh, you know what's on in who who has responded. You know, it strikes me that that's very helpful because I, when I think of the, you know, contentious projects over the past 10 or 20 years, a lot of it had to do with the land and the neighbors, a lot of it. And mm -hmm. so if you can, um, you know, help it, if you can help a developer, uh, that, that may be his biggest obstacle. Um, and you can help him get over that um, by sharing that information with him, by talking to him about what, what might be available. I mean, if I were a developer, I'd be a very happy camper. I, I, I'd call you up, Ken, and I'd send you roses, roses. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one sent me roses yet, so. Well, you never know. <laughs> uh, well, so in the long term, you know, considering this plan, considering the target, it seems to me that this is a significant step forward um, for the utility, for the developers. Uh, to to move toward achieving 100% renewables, um, mm -hmm. do you agree? Uh, do you you have any thoughts on uh, whether this will move the needle uh, significantly faster as we go down the road? We're hopeful that it'll be helpful. Um, it, anytime that you gather more inputs, you know, inputs from community, inputs from landowners, uh, I, I think that it only helps make a better informed decision and, and better planning. Yeah, the other thing is, um, you know, I mean, it, that's that's a hard. I know that's a hard question. It's very qualitative, and it depends on so many variables. Um, but one thing about this this particular program that strikes me is um, this is a statement. It's a statement that you're out there providing affirmative help, a significant help to developers. That's one thing. Um, and the second is that you're you're also making a statement to the public, and for that matter, to other, you know, other institutions, other government agencies, for example, um, that you're doing what you can mm -hmm. uh, to help and to move the needle forward. And finally, as you said, uh, this probably does move the needle forward. So it seems what's not to like about this program? You know, everything is good about this program. So. Good. Yeah. That's why I'm going to ask you to join me in a little song here at the end of our show. As, mm. <laughs> 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 uh, 
The, the title of, of the episode is Hawaiian Electric is looking for land in all the right places. I think I lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was counting on I was counting on you joining me again because I have no idea what the melody might be. <laughs> I think my karaoke days are far over. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Daniel Rita of Hawaiian Electric's Renewable Acquisition Department talking about the land RF, RFI that's right now happening. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you very much. Aloha. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.